Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Made it through another week, another Sunday. We are here. Weather has not been as good this morning. Had a little rain, but you know what? It's still a great day. It's still a great day to be at church, right? All right. Well, y'all do something for me. Let's everybody stand up. I promise I'm not going to have you standing on one leg, clucking like a chicken or anything. Y'all take just a few minutes and uh, go around the room. Have a few minutes of fellowship. Introduce yourself to someone new. Welcome, everyone. Just shake some hands. Welcome, everyone watching online. Glad you are tuned in today. All right. Well, thank you all so much for participating. It is always exciting to see everyone get up and shake hands with others and see all the smiling faces and people being excited to be at church. So it's always awesome to look at that. Uh, so this morning, uh, I do have a couple announcements to make. Please, everyone, mark your calendars for August the 27th. It is Sunday fun day. Um, a lot of stuff going on that day after church. We're going to meet uh, for a picnic over at Bays Mountain. Um, also, there's sign-ups for food and for the relay games out at the connection table. Um, so please get out there, sign up for those after church, and mark that date, August 27th, Sunday fun day. I also just found out as well that it has been confirmed that we are having baptism August the 20th. Yes. All right. And baptisms are so exciting. I love to uh, watch baptisms and help with the baptisms. It's just such an awesome day. So that is going to be August 20th. Um, I think currently we do have a couple of people signed up for sure. And uh, if you would like more information, if you would like to be baptized, you've never been baptized, please see Laura at the connection table, myself, PJ, Amanda, will be happy to help you out, get you set up as well, if that's something you would like to participate in as well. Um, but yes, very exciting stuff going on. So this morning, um, we saw the video here, and uh, when PJ sent me this this week, it, it really got me thinking of how quickly things can change, how quickly, uh, in an instance, everything can change for you. So as I was looking in the mirror this week, uh, and over the past few months or so, it's gotten worse, but I have noticed that I'm starting to lose some hair up here. I'm getting a lot more gray whiskers in my beard. Um, and it really got me thinking, I just turned 40 this year. So more than likely, I'm on the downhill side of my life. I'm just being honest, y'all. It got me thinking about eternity and how eternity affects us all. Because at some point, we're all going to pass on from this world. And you have to know where you're going for eternity. Because the afterlife is what means more than anything in this world. But what you do in this world helps prepare you for your eternity. You have to come in here and make a decision. 
to whether you're going to choose to serve God or whether you're going to choose to go the other way and not choose God. And the other way is not a good way. We don't use this word a lot anymore in church, but it's hell. And there is a heaven and a hell. And hell is an awful place. And if you do not choose to follow Jesus and to serve God, then you're going to end up in hell. It's that simple. But it got me thinking about eternity and how important it is and how in an instance your life can be changed. At any moment, all of our lives could be changed. We could be in an accident out here on Highway 23. You could be in an accident at work. Anything. And that would be the end. And my question this morning is, is where have you made your eternity? Where have you chose to make your eternity? So if you're here this morning and you've not made that decision, you're at a great place. You're at a great place to start. I ask you if you're here this morning to just open up your ears and your heart and let God speak into your life this morning and make that decision. Make that decision. Because at some point, all of us are going to have to face an eternity. There's no way around it. Also, while you're here this morning, uh, we're here to worship and we're here to give praise to God. And so I ask you to just participate, open your hearts and minds again, um, to just serve God, to be involved. If you've chose to serve God, then let's show it. Let's participate. Let's be excited to be here. Let's be excited to show our love for Christ this morning. Because that's what we're here for, right? Amen. We're here to worship. We're here to show our love for Christ. So if you're here this morning and you have made that decision, then let's be active this morning. Let's participate in worship. Let's uh, be involved. And this morning as well, like I said, if you, if you haven't made that decision of eternity, I'm just going to ask you to think about it. Open your heart to Jesus this morning. Listen to the message and let God speak into your life. And come to know Jesus the way I have come to know Jesus and the way others have come to know Jesus. He is your only way to heaven. And we have to, we have to make that decision at some point. And I'm not trying to scare you this morning. I just want you to realize that anything can happen in an instance. Your life can be completely changed. So this morning, as we worship, as we uh, listen to the message, let's participate. Let's be involved. Let's be excited to be here because it's a great day to be in church. Every, every time we get to come to church, it's a great day. This morning... We're going to stand and worship here shortly. I'm going to pray. And, uh, yeah, the youth, we are going upstairs. Uh, we're going to start a new series called Holy Habits. I'm very excited about this one. So if you are of youth age, uh, this morning, as soon as I get done with this intro, you're welcome to join us upstairs uh, in the youth room. I'm excited about this one. This is a really good one. Holy Habits is the name of it. Uh, very excited. Um, about where this is going to lead us, and hopefully I'll get to share some of that with you all next week uh, about holy habits and how we can put those into our lives, all right? Y'all bow your heads with me this morning. We're going to pray and get right into this. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just so thankful to be here. Lord, we're so thankful for the breath that you have given us today. Lord, we're thankful for everyone that has gathered here to be a part of this Sunday morning sermon, our service, Lord. Father, I just thank you so much for what you've done in my life. I thank you for the way you've changed me, Lord. Lord, I thank you for giving me an eternity of heaven. Lord, thank you so much that your son Jesus died for us to provide us that eternity, to give us heaven through his blood that we may come to know you more and more each and every day. Father, I pray this morning that you will be with PJ and just fill his cup. Allow your words to just flow through him, Lord, that it will hit the ears that it needs to hear, that the hearts will be open, Lord, so that they will just come to accept your words this morning, Lord, and your message. Father, let us all be lights shining brightly. And, Lord, just bless all your churches this morning. Let us see souls change forever, Lord. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Just All right, good morning, Uplift. Uh, tell you what, Jason does an awesome job on, on these intros, and uh, that song that we just sung, um, I can relate to that so much, and I just want to start out this morning just by asking a question. 
uh, maybe when you're a little, uh, maybe even right now, but how many of y'all have ever been dragged to church? You, you've been dragged. Yeah, we've been there. I've been, uh, you may have been drugged, uh, however you want to say that. Um, but we've been, uh, it's, it's kind of unreal, but these, these are things that kind of help build up who, you know, who you are. And it kind of, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some of you here, even today, not by your own choosing, maybe, you know, you're here to feel an obligation or maybe you're here to, uh, to please someone else. But the fact of the matter is, is that you are here. Uh, you are here. And the whole point of this Sermon on the Mount is to get down to the nitty-gritty of who you are. Now, we can look at people, and we can have a perception of who they are. We can look at others, and we can get an idea of maybe what they're like, their likes, their dislikes. But the way that our culture is now is that we can give off That we are one person, but be completely different around other people. So if I were to ask you point blank this morning, who do people say you are? What would they respond? What would they respond? Would you like what they would have to say? So I asked this question to my kids the other day, and I said, if if somebody were to ask you, tell me about your daddy, what, what would you say? Just one thing, what would they say? And without fail, fourth one wasn't with us, it was just the three, but they all said hard working. They all said hard working. And I got to think about that. Is that the message I want my kids to know about me? Like whenever I'm dead and gone, I want to say, well, he's a hard worker. I think I, I, think I want to do a better job at that. But they were being honest. They were being honest. And, and I do work hard. I do work hard. So it is, it is true. But I want them to perceive so much more about me. What do people perceive about you? Let's look at your work. Do you only work hard whenever you know somebody's watching? Do you act differently when you're somewhere and you see there's a security camera? How do we act when we know somebody's watching? Or let's say that we're out with a family. Like, Do we try to have everything all together when we're out with the family? And then at home it's just chaos? Our family of six, it's just kind of chaos everywhere we go, and it's been that way. And uh, it was a chore for us. Uh, we would go to Walmart once a month, and it was a chore for us, and I know that our oldest remembers that. So we'd be pushing the buggy, and there was four of them, okay? So one rode the front of the buggy, one was in the buggy, and the other two had to hold on to each side of the buggy. And so whenever we went to Walmart, you could just almost hear this circus theme music, da 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 and then without fail, everybody that would look at us, they would go, all yours? <laughs> yes. With her? And talking about my wife, I, yes, she gave birth to all four of them. <laughs> and so we kind of got through this, and we got to the point where we're like, girls, you guys are not a problem. You are not a problem. It's what other people perceive, because they're perceiving that our family is total chaos. What do people perceive about you? And sometimes we're really cautious about the way people perceive us. So we'll post things on social media to portray a certain image of us. That's why we get the perfect family photo or the perfect selfie. We want it to be, be perfect. And you get that perfect selfie, you're good, and you realize that something's in the background. Or maybe you're in a bathroom somewhere, and I've never have understood that, why the selfie bathroom thing is a thing. But anyway, you want to make sure that everything is kind of clean up. Nope, that's not going to work. Nope, that one's not going to work. Because we want to portray the right image we want to portray that it's who we are but is it who we really are so last week Melanie did a wonderful job sharing with us about those three things about our words our actions and our reactions because that's getting to the nuts and bolts of who you are so if I were to ask you this morning who are you what would you say who who are you what would you say sometimes we like Melanie shared last week, you define ourselves by our occupation, or maybe, you know, you're a mother. How would you define yourself? Who, who are you? A pastor friend of mine, he never introduces himself as a pastor. He always introduces himself as, I'm just a Christian who's just trying to follow Jesus. And he's been in the ministry 
for over 40 years, and that's the way he introduces himself. I'm like, man, that's, that's a neat way. Who are you? Not who do you think you are, not who do you want to be, not who do you hope to aspire to be, but who are you right now? And if we were being honest, we'd probably, probably say, you know what, I've not achieved where I want to be, but I'm on my way. And I think that's a fair statement. Who, who are we? Or who do you aspire to be? Or are we trying to pretend to be something that we're not? If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're starting a new, I say a new series, but still this Sermon on the Mount. We've been spent a month in Matthew chapter 5. We spent five Sundays in there, and now we're starting in Matthew chapter 6. This is kind of a, the second leg of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And uh, it's really powerful. It's, it's really powerful. And it, it really gets down into really who you are. Really about who you are. And sometimes we're scared for people to know who we are. Sometimes we don't want to let people in. But the thing about it is, is that it always comes out. Who you really are always comes out. What do people see when you're at work? What do they see when you're out and about with your family? What do they see in you? What does your family, what do they see in you? What do they speak about you when you're not around? All those are things that portray into this. And so in Matthew chapter 6, uh, we're just going to look at this because we want your words to match your actions. Jesus gets very personal here, and he says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, he says, Take care not to practice your righteousness in the sight of people, to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. So he's simply saying, doing things to take notice of them. What is he talking about? He's talking about like Facebook likes. That's how we would interpret that, likes. And sometimes people really struggle with this, that if you post something on the social media and you don't get the response that you think you do, well, it starts making you question, well, am I not am I pretty enough? Is this not a good enough vacation or, or, or whatever it is? But again, it's trying to get noticed. He says not to practice righteousness in the sight of people to be noticed. What about the other side of this? If someone is in need, would you meet that need depending on who was watching or not? Would, do you act a certain way when someone is watching you versus when they're not watching you? Now, just so you know, me growing up, I didn't think I could get by with anything. I don't know how in the world, but they just, it's like somehow my parents knew every little thing that, that I did. It didn't, uh, it didn't matter. And if you know uh, my dad, it seems like he knows so many people in, you know, in Scott County, then him being the school system, it's like I couldn't do anything in the schools. Um, I'd come home, he's like, hey, I heard you made a such and such grade today. I'm like, how did they know this stuff? <laughs> All right, talking about your mother, it didn't matter. Somehow, they have eyes in the back, back of their heads. They can be cooking supper, watching TV, talking on the phone, and still know that you got your hand in the cookie jar. We can't get by who we really are. We can't get by who we really are. And our father is seeing this. So what he's telling us is take care not to practice your side of righteousness. Not just when certain people's around, just to take notice by them. We might even use this as bragging, or look, you know, look what I did. A better way to put this is that we might, behave, we might behave a certain way so others can perceive something good about us. But who are we really? Because the Lord knows who you really are. But notice the word that he's saying right here. Practice your righteousness. The word practice here. It's not like an exercise as in like it doesn't count. It's like the word practice as we would use as a doctor's practice. This is where they are performing their study of medicine. Or a lawyer's practice. This is where they're practicing their law. It's about who you are. Who you are. It's not like football practice where it doesn't really count. You're just learning the fundamentals. No, it's about where we are being who we say we are. And that's why I asked at the beginning, who are you? Who do people say you are? Are you one way around one group of people or are you another way somewhere else? Usually when people find out that I'm a pastor, they start treating me different. They'll be, they'll be talking about something, they'll go, shh, 
Here the preacher comes. I'm like, guys, listen, if you're going to do that when I'm not in your presence, you might as well do it when I'm in your presence. Like, I'm not that great. I'm saved, but I'm not that great. What about you? Where do you fit into that? Because what we practice is that's who we are. It's who, the, it's who we are. But then he's talking about the righteousness. And maybe you're like, how do I practice my righteousness? How do I do that? Well, righteousness, all that that means by definition is to be morally right or justifiable. And this is what the Sermon on the Mount is all about. It's about helping you get personal in your relationship with the Savior. That's it. As Larry has always put it, your walk and your talk, they should match. It's about us coming here and being able to praise God and living it Monday through Saturday. That's what it's about. And you're not going to get it always right. That's why we keep coming to church. We keep learning. We keep cultivating our relationship so we can become more like him. Some of you are here today and it's like, man, I really need Jesus. And we all do. That's why this word practice is righteousness. It's about us being the same regardless of the company that we're at. That's why I love what we wear here. So typically what you see me wear here, that's what I'm going to wear to work. That's what I'm going to wear out. Very rarely do you see me in a, a suit and tie. And when you do, you're probably going to make a comment because I'm rarely seen like that. It's usually in funerals or weddings. This is typically what, what I wear. I want to be the same regardless. I want to talk the same regardless. No matter who I, company I'm in, be, be the same. So we're talking about practice this rightness, righteousness. This is the nuts and bolts about you being the salt of the earth or the light of the world. When you practice what you preach, you're being the light to the world. So what this really means, it's like we don't want you to do just come to church. We want you to live it out throughout the week. That's what he's talking about. So when we're given this impression, when we're being righteousness, it's that we're practicing what we've heard in Matthew chapter 5, especially at the end, to be the salt of the earth, to be the light of the world. When he talks about the way that we treat people, our hatred and adultery, our words, our actions, our reactions, all of those is about your behavior, how you act, how you act. And he's saying, don't just be something because somebody else is around. We should be the same person regardless who's around. And we should surround ourselves with others that bring out the best in us. That's why I love coming to church. It's not that any of us had it all figured out. And just this morning, I've talked to a few families, and you're all in the same area that I am. You've got, you've got teenage drivers, and they, we have another teenage driver. She just got her learner's permit uh, Monday, and boy, is she excited. And, I mean, we're, we are too, but we are scared to death. And maybe you're a parent here this morning, and you're scared to death. Maybe your kid is starting to do something new. Maybe you're a grandparent here and you're seeing your kids being at a different stage. We're all going through this together. And he's saying, we need to be the same. Don't just practice it when somebody's looking. Do it all the time. Do it all the time. So these people, what they're doing, when we add people into our life that bring out the best in us, they're helping us with our practice. They're helping us living the talk and walking to talk so look at verse 2 he says goes on he says so when you give to the poor do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do notice that word hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets so that they will be praised by people truly i say to you they have their reward in full but when you give to the poor do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your charitable giving will be in secret and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you be modest we don't have to announce it to the world. Not everything is Facebook worthy. Oh, I helped today do such and such. Or when we come in and we, that's why we try to make our offering as, as subtle as we possibly can. He says, over to the side. And I've yet to see anybody go, hey, I'm on my way to the offering base. Look what I'm about to do. It, it's not a big production. And it's just subtly, just go in there and just subtly do it. I even like doing it online because nobody knows. Nobody knows. But if we're doing it, if we're giving an offering and we're strutting on our way to do it, 
or waiting. Uh, I'm going to wait till somebody can see me. And then you see somebody coming. And it goes. No, it's not about that. What he's saying is we want to be, we want to be as quiet as we possibly can, as discreetly as we possibly can. And it's the same thing whenever we're trying to help somebody in need. You don't need to boast that around. It's not about you getting pats on the back or recognition. Because the nuts and bolts of who we really are, that is the reason. That's the reason we're meeting the need. It's because we want to meet the need. Not a showboat. Not to get attention. So he says, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. All it's saying is, just be as quiet as you possibly can. Be as discreet as you possibly can. Nobody else needs to know. Because your father, that's what's important in verse 4, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. I don't know how many times I've discreetly tried to help somebody else thinking I was going to help them and I'm the one who ended up getting blessed. Me. And it's happened more than once. It's tremendously. So it's not about brosing. It's not about bragging. It's about your intentions. Again, we're going back to you being the salt of the earth, the light of the world. It's about your intentions. So let me ask you this. What is your intentions here today, right now? What is your intentions? Do, do we come to church like, well, it's expected of me? I already said, that, you know, maybe you got dragged here. What is your intentions? I would hope that your intentions are, are my intentions. My intentions every Sunday is, I want to come to better know the Lord and His people. It's not about being perfect. It's not about having the most perfect family, the perfect kids, the perfect job, because there's no perfect life that exists. It's not. And we look to Jesus as having lived the perfect life, but if you start looking at what his life looked like, it was rough. The glory from it is, is that he died and rose again to give us life, that we can have hope. And so I come to church every Sunday with hope that it will spread and that you'll get it that you'll get on fire for him, and that it will ignite a fire in you that you'll be the same person, whether you're at work, or whether you're at home, or whether or not you're at food line. Wherever you're at, you'd be the same. And if you're going to meet a need, meet a need as discreetly as you possibly can because it's who you are. Now, if you ever see me at food line, I'm going to be the same person I am at anywhere else. They've got music playing on the background, and I cannot sing, but I'm going to do it in food line. Because you've got to do something to spice it up. And sometimes, me and this big girl number three, Natty Cakes, sometimes we do it ourselves. And sometimes we even make animal noises. And it drives Amanda crazy. But it's who we are. And we may have one of the girls' friend with us. And guess what we're still doing? Even though that, that friend is around, we're still singing. We're still being silly. We're still making the best of it. And uh, I love it when I'm in a different aisle than my wife. I love it. Because she knows when she hears noises what they are. So my favorite thing to do is whenever we go somewhere like that, and I'll just go, Bah! <laughs> I love it. And usually she'll drop her head and push the cart faster and act like she doesn't know us. But the thing about it is, I do it at home. I do it at work. As a matter of fact, it's the first time I've ever done it at church. <laughs> church, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that who you really are is going to come out. Let people see who you really are. Don't be embarrassed about who you are. Grow together. And as we grow together, we're going to get to know each other better. And we're going to get to know our Father better. That's what he's saying. If you're here today and you're struggling, you're in good company because the church is meant to be a hospital for sinners and not a country club for saints. And I know that that's a cliche and I've heard that time and time again, but that's what we are. So you're in need. You need help. This is where we're at. And if you're here this morning and you are struggling with something, then you need to be bold enough to say, you know what, I need prayer. I've got a decision to make, I need prayer. There's something going on in my family, we need prayer. There's something going on with my health. I need prayer. We need to go through it together, not pretend or fake it. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying don't fake it. Don't practice your righteousness just in front of people. Don't come and say glory, hallelujah, how great is our God. And then live completely different than that from the week. He's saying let's be the same. And it's going to take some exercising what that looks like. Because we're not going to always get it right. 
This is why we come to church and just be honest about who we are. That's what Jesus is trying to do. Be the light of the world, regardless of who is around. Be the light of the world, regardless of who is around. Now, I mentioned praying about what needs you have. And many of us, we struggle with prayer. We struggle with prayer because we don't know what to say. We don't know how to say it. Look at what he said in verse 5. He said, and when you pray, you are not to be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogue and on the street corner so that they will be seen by people. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. Pat's on the back. But as for you, when you pray, go in your inner room, close your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And I want to put this in P.J. Johnson's terms, okay? He's saying, what you pray doesn't matter as much as what you're trying to pray. He knows your heart. He knows it. It's not about eloquent words. I used to get so intimidated about certain people that they would call out to pray in church and some of the words that they would use and they would quote scripture and it was just this big, long, thought-out production. Then I would go to the Lord and I'm like, hey God, it's me again. Um, I need some help here. I've got this going on. Uh, help me, Lord. And that's pretty much the way that it would come out. But you know that he would hear my prayer? He hears your prayer. Look at that last part. Look at that last part. He says, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Done in secret. That's why whenever you come to the altar and pray, you don't have to do it out loud. It doesn't have to be a big production. It's about the intentions of your heart. What is there? If we were to examine your heart, what would we see? What would we see that would be on your heart that you're struggling with or that burdens you or that weighs you down? That's what's important. That's what we're communicating to him, not what we're trying to pretend to be in front of everybody else. We just say what's on our heart. So when we pray, we're not trying to use vain repetition. And when I read this in the Bible, I was like, man, this makes so much perfect sense. So much perfect sense. They would stand in the streets and pray just to get attention. For someone to say, oh, that was a great prayer. Or look at that person, they're so holy, they pray so good. They pray so good. It's about you just telling God what's on your heart. Did you hear that song we just sung? That's what it's about. I do not know how many times that growing up, it was in church and I was beside my mom. It'd be a time for the invitation and praying. And all you could see was her. She had her eyes closed and she was just mumbling words. Her lips were moving, but nothing was coming out. That's what he's talking about. You just having a little talk with Jesus, telling him what's on your heart. And that song that we just sang, it walks us right through. It's just a conversation. You don't know how to pray? Yes, you do. You just have a little talk with Jesus. Hey, God, here's what's going on. This is it. And share with him what's on your burden. So what you pray and how you pray and what you say, what if you say something wrong? I don't know that we can. I, I don't know that we can. He just wants to hear from you. Look at verse 7. He says, And when you're praying, do not use as thoughtless repetitions as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So friends, I'm going to ask you this morning, this morning, what do you need this morning? What is your burden this morning? What is weighing on you this morning? Because your Father knows your need. What's your role in it? Is to say, Lord, this is my need. It's to recognize it. We're not going to draw this out. This is about you being practicing who you are. It is not a production or show for anybody else to see. It's just a matter between you and God. This morning, do you have something on your heart that you need to give to Him? It's not about a production for anybody else to see. This is about as point blank, just a, as intimate as it can be between you and Him, your need this morning. Is something weighing on you? Then saying, just come. Share with him what's on your heart. And just go right back to your seat. It's that simple. This is the nuts and bolts of being the salt of the earth. This is what it's like to be a light to the world. Not put on a show for anybody else. 
It's not a production for others to see, although somebody may see it. It's about between you and your relationship with the Father. Now, do you have something in your heart that you need to lay down before Him? Super Dave, I want to ask you if you would to kill the lights. And we're going to make this as intimate as we possibly can. And if you've got something on your heart this morning, then this altar is open for you to come and lay that burden down, whatever that looks like. I'm going to ask you if you would to please stand. And we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you would, just stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word today, and it's vibrant. It's alive. And this morning, Father, we recognize that your church house here is a hot. for not being done with us yet but you're still doing a great work Father sometimes we
Thank you.